Hello, I'm Gary Grassi, and I'm a product manager for the Emerging Technologies team at VMware. And today I'm going to talk about VMware Genie, an internal virtual assistant at VMware um, that's built on different types of open source technology. So VMware Genie is essentially a virtual assistant for VMware colleagues that allows them to do things like book conference rooms, schedule meetings, and get answers to questions. And you can think of this like a um, virtual assistant wrapped around a conversational bot. And what I mean by that is the there at the core, there is a conversational AI that can answer questions and interact with users. And built around that is a user interface that it gives uh, VMware colleagues a personalized experience. So this is a look at what uh, VMware Genie looks like in the mobile application. So this is available on iOS and Android for VMware employees. And it's essentially a virtual assistant app and gives you things like your current meetings, uh, recommended skills, and company-wide events. And this is where you can launch the uh, conversational component of Genie as well, which I'll get into in a little bit. The actual skills that Genie supports are um, broken down into a few categories. So these are the conversational skills. And the first set is um, related to people and meetings. So this is things like meeting scheduling, conference room booking, people search, and calling colleagues. The second category is more corporate calendars and events. And so that's things like uh, holidays, being able to check the upcoming pay schedule, um, seeing your personal calendar, and being able to set reminders for yourself. And we also have a few miscellaneous skills. Uh, we have a jokes and fun facts skill. So you can ask Junie to tell you a joke or tell you a fun fact, as is a prerequisite for all good virtual assistants. And you can also check things like the lunch menu when uh, cafeterias are open. In addition to that, we have a built-in FAQ service. And this is sort of a fallback for the other skills. So if nothing matches any of those 10 skills that you're trying to uh, interact with Genie, it will fall back and go to an FAQ and search this database to try and answer your question as best possible. And this is really useful for things like IT support and being able to uh, answer questions about um, VMware. And this is actually powered by Microsoft Q&A. Uh, the skills themselves are powered by Rasa, which is an open source uh, conversational AI framework. So with that, let me show you some of the features and technologies that uh, VMware Genie actually uses and has. And I'll go ahead and share my phone screen here. So you can see here, this gives me an overview of my day and upcoming company-wide events, as well as the suggested skills that I mentioned. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this reminder skill. And you can see that it said for me to set a reminder at tomorrow at 10 a.m. Jeannie's now asking me what I want the reminder to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, get coffee. And it understands that request and goes ahead and sets this reminder for me. So tomorrow I'll be reminded in Outlook at 10 a.m. to get coffee. Something I wanna note here is that when I sent the request to set a reminder for tomorrow, it actually converts tomorrow into a real date on the back end. And this is done utilizing the Duckling API from wit.ai, which is an open source uh, module for converting those kind of requests. I'll go ahead and show another example of what Genie can do by scheduling a meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, schedule a meeting with Scott and Pratik. And you can see that um, it's gonna load up these contacts. I actually didn't say the last names because Genie knows who the people I work with most closely are. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this Scott and this Pratik. And I'll confirm that request and Jeannie will give me a proposed time and I'll say, yes, that looks good. And Jeannie will go ahead and schedule that request for me. It's taking a second here, but there it goes. Okay, so that's a few examples of how Jeannie works and what it looks like in action. I'm gonna switch back and talk a little bit more about the technology, especially the open source technology that we use to power this application.
So these are some of the main um, softwares and pieces of technology that Genie is comprised of and kind of surround Genie to power it. Uh, we utilize Spring, uh, Rasa, and Kafka, which are all open source technologies. In addition to that, we use Microsoft Cognitive Services, which is not. But um, a lot of the APIs and business logic for Genie is written in Spring, which is an open source Java framework that's actually maintained by VMware. And a lot of the core machine learning and conversational bot functionality is powered by Rasa, which is an open source framework for uh, powering conversational bots. In addition to that, we use, as I mentioned, Duckling and Apache Kafka, which is for uh, streaming events and streaming data, which I'll talk about how they're used in a little bit. So at a very high level, this is what the Genie architecture looks like. On the left-hand side, you start with some sort of user input. If this is speech input, it will go through Microsoft's speech APIs to convert that to text. If it's text input, it will go directly to the Genie core. And then once it decides what it's going to do, it will make an API call to some API or backend service. What I really wanna hone in on though is the Genie core because this is where um, all of the action happens and a lot of the open source technologies that make up Genie are utilized. So diving into that kind of a zoomed in view of that Genie core and a high level architecture of that is what you see here. So I'll walk through this and talk about what a typical flow through this architecture looks like and what uh, pieces of this are built using different open source technologies. So the first thing that happens is a request comes in. For example, it could be schedule a meeting um, the first thing, the first place that goes is to the Genie Orchestrator API, and that's actually built uh, completely in Spring. So this is built on the Spring open source Java framework. After it's uh, sort of handled by that and parsed out, it goes to the skill classifier, which determines what kind of request you're making. And this skill classifier is actually an extension of the Rasa cluster. So this is built on the Rasa open source framework as well. And essentially that determines what it, what kind of requests you're making. In this case, if we're saying schedule a meeting, it's a meeting scheduling request. And that goes into the core Rasa cluster, um, essentially determines what to do with it, parses out the different entities of that request. So if I say schedule a meeting with John, John is an entity. So the Rasa cluster will figure that out for me. And then it'll go to the action orchestrator API, which is also built in Spring. And from here, this essentially executes whatever Rasa determined to be the functionality we want and sends it to some external or um, you know, in-house API for executing that functionality. If it's something like scheduling meeting, it will call the Microsoft Outlook APIs to schedule those meetings. And then once all of that is done, um, the request comes back, say it's successful, it goes back to the response handler, which then responds to the user telling them, I've scheduled your meeting, or if it needs additional information, asking for that information, at which point the process will repeat until it's done. So with that, the only part of this I haven't touched on yet is down here. And what this is, is essentially a way, a feedback loop for improving the overall accuracy of the Rasa um, cluster and the machine learning models. So what happens is when people make requests, these conversations um, get anonymized and published uh, via Kafka broker. And then someone from our engineering team who understands the machine learning and training process reviews these, uh, puts them back into the Rasa cluster. And from there, it will be, have a more accurate ability to parse out the information. So that's a high level overview of how we use these open source technologies to make Genie actually work and make those features I demoed before actually function. Um, the last thing I wanna do is kind of bring it all together and show you what a typical skill uh, onboarding lifecycle is like for Genie and how something goes from an idea to actually being in the application and utilizing that architecture and open source technology that you saw. So the first thing that happens is someone has an idea for a new skill in Genie or a new functionality. In this case, let's say it's, uh, they want the ability to ask Genie what time is it in any given city in the world. 
So the first thing that needs to happen is an intent needs to be created. And an intent is essentially just a mapping from um, a few different types of phrases to a specific um, field, which we're going to call an intent. In this case, we're going to call it the world time intent. So you can see here I have what time is it in Palo Alto? Tell me Palo Alto's current time and how late is it in Palo Alto? These three things all say essentially the same thing. And by mapping it to an intent in Rasa, this essentially tells Rasa, hey, I want things that are kind of like this request that are basically saying this to map to the world time intent. And Rasa um, and that framework helps figure those things out and be able to determine and train the model to figure out when things, when requests are similar to that, those questions. So what happens now is when you ask a request, it goes through Genie and goes through Rasa and determines that you're asking a world time request and responds, hey, it's 5.56 PM in Palo Alto right now. But that's good, that's a good start. But right now it can only tell time for Palo Alto, which is good sometimes, but most of the time you're gonna be asking about other cities too. So the next thing we need to do is define an entity and an entity is essentially a variable within the intent that can change with the request. And this is actually a really important part because this allows you to open up to a much broader range of requests and questions. So in this case, we're gonna define Palo Alto as an entity, or in these examples, Palo Alto is the entity, but we're gonna define it as a city entity because it can be any city that you choose. So, in this request, we've mapped it to the city entity. And what happens next is we want to bring that all together. So we've mapped the world time intent. So it know, Genie and Rasa now know when you're asking what time is it in a city. We've also mapped the city entity, which means that it knows when you say the city's name, whatever city it is, that it is a city. So the last thing that happens is we have some external request that goes and pulls data from some API. Let's say like worldtime.com has an API and you can send the city name and it sends you the time back. So that's the final piece of this. Um, and to show what that actually looks like uh, in the final uh, version of this, now when we ask what time is it in Olu, it's going to go through Genie, it's going to go through Rasa, and it's going to say, okay, they're asking what time is it in a specific city, and that city is Olu. It will execute the request to an external API and then come back saying the time in Olu is currently 3.56 a.m. So it will get the accurate time for that specific city. And that's kind of a high level overview of how skills get onboarded and built in Rasa and Genie and how we utilize those different open source frameworks to make something like Genie work and function. That's all I have for today. Uh, thank you and take care.